So hello and welcome to lesson three in our study of integral equations. So I'm going to kind of know final year students of mathematics KNUSD. And I'll be taking you through today's video. So today's lesson we'll be talking about how to solve a Fred Holmes integral equation if the kernel is separable. So from our application of integral equations, you should know what a Fred Holmes integral equation is and you should know what the kernel of an integral equation is. So let's consider the integral equation below in equation one. So we assume that our kernel, that's k of xt, is separable. So meaning we can write it in this form, k of xt equals a certain function g of x times h of t, okay? And we call that equation two. So we replace that in equation one. So that means wherever you find ks of t, we put that one inside. So we get y of x to be equal to f of x plus lambda, the integral from a to b, g of x times h of t, y of t dt. Okay, so when we get this, then one thing is obvious here. You know, we are integrating with respect to t. So that means that g of x is a constant because it's a function of x and it's a function of t. So we can bring that one out. When we bring that one out, we get this and we name this equation three. So when we name this equation three, what we do is that we let c represent everything here. So we see let c be this. And we call this equation four, okay? So putting equation four in equation three, that means we have y of x will be equal to f of x plus lambda g of x times c because the whole of this here is c. And let's name this equation four a. So what we do is that we change variables, okay? So s can be t, so we change s to t. So this will give us y of t will be equal to f of t plus lambda g of t times c. All right, so you could see that we had c is equal to something here, right? So that means now we know what y of t is, so we can come and put it here. So you put equation five into equation four a. And that will give us the integral from a to b h of t. Then now our y of t is whatever we can um, find here, right? Okay. So when we multiply through, okay, so when you put this five into this equation four, we are going to get this. Because wherever you find y of t, we put this there. So when you expand this, this will give us c because integral from a to b, h of t, f of t, dt, plus integral from a to b, lambda h of t, dt, c, dt, all right? So here what we do is that, since lambda is a constant, we bring lambda out and we have this equation. Then we try to bring the terms containing c to one side. So you see we have c here and c here. So we bring this to the left side and we have that. And since c is a constant, we can also put that one out. And we have this at the right hand side. So here we can factorize C out. So factorizing C out is going to give us C times one minus lambda times whatever we have here, right? So since we are looking for C, we divide through by the coefficient of C. So that will give us C will be equal to what we have here. So this is equation six. But remember from equation four E that we had y of x equals what we can see here. So now we have our c. 
So making substitution, we have that's lambda g of x times whatever we have here, which is c. And this happens to be the solution to the integral equation. You know, when you say we are solving integral equations, what we are doing is that we are trying to find the unknown what function, y of x. Okay. So this is the formula we use. So now let's try to solve an example with it to make it very simple to understand. So the example says, solve for the unknown function in this integral equation. So we are finding for y of x. Okay. So from the question, we have y of x to be equal to what we can see here. So when you compare this to the general form of an integral equation, that is y of x equals f of x plus integral from a to b lambda k of x t, y of t dt. What it means that our free term f of x is equal to s squared. Our investigative parameter lambda is negative one. Our kernel k of t is x t. And here we can see that k of x t is equal to g of x h of t, which is k x t. So x for g of x, h of t for t. So this makes it separable, right? And it's a Fred Holmes integral equation because our limits of integrations are all constants. We don't have any variable. So we can apply the formula we just learned. So we know that the solution is given as f of x plus lambda g of x times c. Okay. So this is our f of x, x squared. And our lambda, the investigative parameter is negative one. That's why you have negative here. Then our g of x is this x. Then our c is this thing here. So comparing equation one and equation two, we have this to be our C, right? So meaning now we have, so from, the, from this place, or you can even check it from this place, we would have y of x will be equal to x squared minus x, then everything we have here becomes C. So that's what we can see here. Then we change variables, so we put t where we find our x. So this gives us y of t equals t squared minus t c. Then putting that into equation four. So this equation three. We're putting that in equation three. That means wherever we find y of t, we put this there. Okay. So we put in equation four into equation three. So this will give us c will be equal to the integral from zero to one. T, my y of t is given what we can see here, the t. And this will give us c is equal to the integral zero to one, t cubed minus t squared c dt. So we integrate with respect to t, and that gives us this. And when you put in our limit of integration, we get one over four minus one over three times c. So we solve for C, okay. We go through the process, and that gives us C to be three over 16. So we know that from equation one, our unknown function y of x equals x squared minus x times C, but now C is three over 16. So making that substitution means we've been able to figure out our unknown function. So we've been able to solve the integral equation. So that happens to be it. So when you have a Fred Holmes integral equation and your kernel is separable, the method we just discussed is what you can use to solve that. And it helps you to achieve your unknown function to find it in a very simple and fast way. So in our next lesson, we'll be talking about solution of an integral equation. So how do we get something to be a solution of our integral equation? How do we test that? Well, thank you very much, and see you in the next video.